All right, and welcome back students taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're doing the chapter 18 drill problems, the odd number problems. And we're going to start out with 18-2 through 18-4. Um, when I had looked at it in the, uh, the textbook, I realized that we only do the odd numbered problems. But since that was just specifically FIFO, and this problem has us, you know, 18-2 uh, is the weighted average. 18-3 is FIFO and 18-4 is LIFO. Um, I thought it would uh, behoove us to do all of them, um, you know, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so um, we have the weighted average and we have FIFO and we have LIFO. Okay. All right, so um, let's take the weighted average, okay? Um, Remember, the weighted average, um, we're going to get a uh, cost per unit, right? We're going to have a dollar per unit. And we multiply the dollar per unit times the number of units, okay, to the number of units in order to get our uh, inventory value. So, um, let me read the problem. It says here, from the following, A, calculate the cost of ending inventory. Okay, so we're calculating the cost of ending, ending inventory. And we're going to round the average unit cost to the nearest cent. Okay. Um, B, the cost of goods sold using the weighted average method, FIFO and LIFO. And our ending inventory is going to show 61 units. Okay, so... We have to calculate the cost of the ending inventory. Well, to do that, what does that mean? Well, that's like our goods available for sale. It's just said in a different manner, right? So, um, you know, we have our beginning inventory on January 1st, all right? And they've already calculated that out by taking the 40 units, 40 number purchase times $4 is 160. And then there were purchases on April 1st. June 1st and November 1st. So 60 times uh, 7 is 420. 50 times 8 is 400. 55 times 9 is 495. So when we add all of those up, we end up with 17, I'm sorry, 1475. And that is the cost of our ending inventory. Okay. So now we're going to move on to uh, number two, which uh, problem 18-2, which is the weighted average method. So I'm going to write this 1475 up here as the cost of ending inventory. Okay. All right. So weighted average method now. Right. And... Remember, the weighted average method is we have to take that ending inventory of 1475, okay, because that's the cost, and we're dividing it by the number of units so that we can get a cost per unit, right? So our number, uh, our number of units here is 5, 10, 205. So we're dividing by 205, and that means we have a cost per unit of... Let's see, 1475 divided by 205 gives us 1720. I'm sorry, 720 as our cost per unit. Now, we want to know since that's the average cost per unit, and since we have 61 units, we take the 1720 and we multiply it by the 61, and that means we end up with $439.20 for our weighted average. 439.20. Okay, so that's weighted average. Go back to the video on weighted average in order to, you know, in the theory section, in order to uh, uh, know uh, to, to see, you know, why that is and what it is. Again, the theory explains it, and here we're actually doing it. Okay, All right, so. Um, Let's see here. So they want oh, they wanted to know what was that's the ending inventory. All right, I had said I'm sorry. 
that's the ending inventory but they also want to know what the um, cost of goods sold is so we take our 1475 and then we have to subtract out the 43920 and the, that difference is 103520 is our cost of goods sold okay so um, and so I'm just gonna just put over here 103520 as our cost of goods sold so here's our ending inventory and this is cost of goods oops let me just that blue is not good um, so that's going to be our cost of goods sold column all right so that was uh, weighted average now we need to do the FIFO and LIFO okay and since we have 205 units okay and remember if you watch that the two videos on FIFO and LIFO here's where a lot of people get tripped up you know you know there's 205 units right here okay and it says the ending inventory is 61 units okay and now students will go okay they'll they'll do one of two th two things wrong here they don't pay attention to first in first out or last in first out which is obvious first in first out means the first ones in would be the first ones out with FIFO okay last in first out would start here with November because they were the last ones in okay and would be the first ones out think about that refrigerator that I had explained in the the theory videos you know I put in the January 1st inventory close the door I open the door push January back and I put in April's okay close the door I open the door uh, I have to push everything to the back and then I put June in the front close the door open the door I put in November right uh, open the door push everything to the back and then I put November in they were the last ones in okay now that's the first thing that students get kind of mixed up on is which one which direction they're going the second thing that they do is they see the 61 units and they think that's the number that was sold no that's the quantity on hand okay they automatically take the 61 and say okay let me take off 61 out of here and whatever's left over is what I you know is what I have in it no that's wrong that's what you have left you have to get to the 61 okay you start out with 25 205 okay and if you have 61 on hand and they and the students don't do this math here and they don't realize that they have to get rid of 144 units okay so if we're getting rid of 144 units and we're using FIFO um, we're going to start from the first ones in or the first ones out so if I have to get rid of 144 right from the uh, from January because they were the first ones in they're the first ones I'm going to take out I get rid of 40 right so they're gone so I'm down to 104 that I have to get rid of. So then I look at April and I have 60, so I can get rid of the full 60. So now I'm down to 44. Okay. Now I'm looking at June and I have 50 in June, but I only need 44. Okay. So um, 50 less 44 means that there's six left. So when I so what I have left in inventory is six at eight dollars and 55 at nine dollars. Okay. So six at eight dollars is forty-eight dollars, and the nine at fifty-five is four hundred and ninety-five. So that's thirteen, fourteen. So I have five hundred and forty-three dollars as the value of my ending inventory. Okay. Okay, so that's the cost of my ending inventory. Now we have to go back and so let me write that up here. That's equal to $543. Okay. 
now we're going to figure out what our cost of goods sold was. Well, it's the same, we're doing the same exact thing that we did with the uh, weighted average in that we took our uh, 14.75, okay, and we are subtracting out the 543 is what's in inventory, because remember, this is available, right? And we're subtracting out what's in an inventory, right? And that leaves us with $932 is our cost of goods sold. Okay, so that's $932, okay, for FIFO. All right, now LIFO is pretty much the same thing as FIFO, but you know it's going from the other direction okay so for LIFO we're going to start here first with November so I have a hundred uh, I knew I needed to get out uh, get rid of 144 units right so with November there's 55 I can get rid of the 55 so that gives me 989 left from June I could get rid of 50 that leaves me 39 left. Okay. Now, in April, I, since I have 60 and I have to get rid of 39, well, 60 less 39 is 21 units left. So I take out the 39 of the 60 and I have 21 units left at $7. So I have 21 at $7 is equal to uh, 147. And then, of course, I still have my 40 at 4, which is 160. So that means my inventory is 307. Okay. My ending inventory is $307. All right. And I take the 1475 and I subtract out the 307. And that gives me uh, $1,168 as my cost of goods sold. So that's $168 for my cost of goods sold. Okay. So, you know, doing FIFO and MIFO, you know, it's just the flip side of each other. It's no, but notice it's all the same math. And it's just a matter of which ones um, I'm taking out. Don't get it wrong. Um, and of course, the you know the other big point about doing uh, these methods in is that you know we have an ending unit of ending inventory of 61, and we had available 205. So the difference between the two is 144 that were sold. Okay. Um, remember from the second video, think about that uh, walk-in cooler in the grocery store. You're sitting back in the accounting office. You don't see what's going on, okay? But you know that you had a beginning inventory. You knew stuff was being purchased and put in, put in, put in, but you had no idea how much was sold. Well, somebody goes out, takes the inventory and says, oh, I have 61 uh, still in there. And when you look at your books, your books show that, oh, you had started out with 40, you bought, you bought, you bought, and now you had 205 on your books. But since you only had 61 left, you know, 144 were sold. And those 144 have to come off of the inventory somewhere. And that's why you start, you know, depending upon FIFO or LIFO, which end you start from. Okay. So that's problems 18-2 through 18-4. Uh, and I will stop here as... We're going to end up doing, um, you know, 18, let's see here, I don't know, that even though we're supposed to do odd number problems, um, because of the way these are set up, we have to uh, do a bunch of them anyway. So I'll pick up in the next video.